Hey, hi, I'm Anne-Marie Eldering. I'm a research scientist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is a NASA lab in Pasadena, California. And uh, my focus is earth sciences. In particular, I'm studying the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, one of the key greenhouse gases. We're building a new satellite instrument to measure carbon dioxide. And I'm here in Wellington because there's a special meeting of greenhouse gas scientists, people who make these measurements of greenhouse gases, mostly from the ground, but all over the world, every continent, uh, almost every country are meeting this week so they can describe, discuss their science. And uh, it's an important meeting because these records of the concentrations of greenhouse gases are what we rely on um, to really understand what's happening in, in the science. And we want to make sure that all of the measurements are exactly comparable. We need them to be very accurate and precise. And so the scientists are gathering to talk about the techniques they use, make sure they understand any differences, and try to agree on methods that they're going to use for the measurements. And I'm here, and particularly even though I work from a satellite, I rely on their data. I make a satellite measurement, but I need their information to verify my numbers are correct. And so I want to be here to understand how they're making measurements and get to know them so we can work together with my data when we start collecting it. My project's called the Orbiting Carbon Observatory, or OCO2, and it's a satellite instrument that's being built by NASA, and the purpose is to measure carbon dioxide globally. And we want to do that because we know that carbon dioxide is increasing from year to year, but there's still questions about some of the details. For example, we know that humans are emitting carbon dioxide when we burn fossil fuels, but it appears that only a fraction of that remains in the atmosphere, and a fraction of that is either going into oceans or going into trees and other biosphere. And we're trying to understand whether it's the ocean or the biosphere, and our global measurement will be important to understanding that. So we are going to make these global measurements, and it'll, we think that those types of measurements and, and having them all around the globe rather than just at a few locations are important to unraveling where the CO2 is going. And it's important to understand those details of the processes in part because right now we're making predictions about the future, about how much CO2 will be in the atmosphere if we emit as much as we are right now. But if those processes change in the future or they respond in a way we don't understand, that can impact the accuracy of the prediction. So we really need to understand those details in, in order to make the best predictions possible and understand how we need to modify the CO2 emissions to uh, protect ourselves from climate change. Yeah, I've had an exciting trip to Wellington. Other than seeing the All Blacks walk by because of the Victory Parade, yay! I uh, had the opportunity to visit a couple of schools and so I talked to two different classes of school children to tell them about the work that we're doing at NASA and about the carbon cycle and uh, also just about careers in sciences and engineering because I'm actually a engineer by training, although I'm practicing as a scientist right now, and I think it's interesting to tell uh, younger students how I got to where I'm getting, how you end up being a scientist for NASA. There's a couple of things that seem really important. One is it's take your math and science classes while you're uh, still in, in university and high school. They open the doors to a realm of possibilities. And the other things are important, like not losing your curiosity. If you find this interesting, keep doing it and, and work on finding a career that really ignites your interest and, and is something that you love. And certainly, my career path has been rather crooked. I started out with chemical engineering. I was a professor in civil and environmental engineering. Then I started working on satellite remote sensing. So I've learned skills on along the way and adapted until I found a job that I really love. And I think that's an important, uh, you have to be willing to take those steps and move through different areas to really find what you love in life.